Uh, thank you, Charles. Good morning. Um, and we're living in, in very extraordinary and consequential times, um, to say the least. Um, and I think uh, Georg and Achim did a great job of speaking about uh, how businesses and governments, and, and in fact all of us as consumers and citizens, will be viewed uh, by history. Um, we've got a trio of crises. We've got uh, the, the deep economic recession. We've got very serious and, and, and very quickly accelerating uh, ecosystems, uh, environmental, natural resource challenges, and we've got also a collapse uh, of trust uh, in business. So that's the world that, that companies are living in today. Um, at the same time, I think there are, uh, there's, there's a trio of opportunities. There's the opportunity uh, to uh, build a, a new economy uh, based on, on low carbon. Uh, there is an opportunity to reach new markets, uh, given that uh, we now have a world that is stitched together uh, through technology uh, with uh, the opportunity to bring prosperity to all the world's people. Uh, and I think we've got an opportunity also for business uh, to help build, uh, create new markets and, and create new kinds of, of market uh, demands, uh, in part by educating uh, consumers uh, to uh, help, uh, help them make choices that will lead to the low-carbon economy. So. Uh, as always in times like these, uh, there are some real choices. And for businesses, it's absolutely essential, of course, uh, to survive uh, the conditions we've got right now, but also look to the future and not be bound too much uh, by so, so much by short-term pressures that longer-term considerations that will determine whether today's businesses are, are around, let alone, let alone thriving uh, in the decades to come. That's, that's the dual challenge. Now, the pace of change is, is very constrained right now. We've got market rules uh, that make it uh, very difficult, more difficult than needed, uh, to consider uh, so-called extra financial considerations. Uh, consumers don't always act, uh, indeed, in their own interests, uh, because there is so much waste uh, in, our, in our businesses, but also in terms of how consumers go about their daily lives. Collaboration, the collaboration that's needed is slow. Uh, and, uh, and very often, it's also hard to get new technologies, whether it's carbon capture or other things, uh, to be brought to the kind of scale that's needed uh, to transform the economy that we've got today into the economy uh, that we need for the decades to come. Now, um, at a press meeting for B4E yesterday, journalists asked uh, someone else, uh, okay, tell me what needs to be done and needs to be done now. So I'd like to close with some very short answers to that question. One is that we really should encourage businesses and governments uh, to join together to help build market rules uh, that allow and, and, and in fact require consideration of non-financial considerations that are material to business success and lead to the economy that we, that we need because we don't have those right now. Um, number two, we really need to figure out a massive uh, efficiency drive. If the business community embraced quality uh, a generation ago, we need to embrace efficiency, and that needs to be done uh, by the public as well because of the massive waste that's in the system, in buildings, in energy use, et cetera. Um, third, we, we need to make the kinds of investments that will bring new technologies to scale. There are some promising signs from the various stimulus packages, uh, but I think we can go further. A and fourth, we need to have a price on carbon that is realistic, predictable, uh, and, and helps to en enable markets to operate more efficiently with businesses having the kind of forward certainty that they need to start making the kinds of investments that will make sense and that will deliver this transformation uh, to, to a new, uh, to, to a low carbon economy.